Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart Talks. I hope you can see me. I'm sitting outside in my back garden. Um, I thought I would film the video out here. I know you can't see the top of my hat. Let me move that back. Wait there, wait there, wait there. Is that any better? Yeah, so um, as I say, the, the name of this video is called We Need To Talk. And we really do need to talk. So after this, I'll tell you what we need to talk about. Hi everybody, so I'm in my back garden, the light is fading, but I thought I'd do it out here for a change, you know, get a bit of fresh air. So. Um, as I said at the beginning of this video that we need to talk and we really do and it is serious Well, actually, it's not serious It's just that I wanted to sit down and have a conversation with you and talk to you because I've had so many wonderful guests on over the last couple of months and done interviews with so many different people that I haven't I realized I haven't done a sit down chat video with you and I really miss it you know and people keep messaging me asking me what's going on so I thought this week I'm gonna do a sit down chat video with you so I have a little list of things here that I am gonna read out and um, tell you what's going on in my life so the first thing I want to tell you about is tough love podcast so tough love is a podcast that talks about thriving and surviving after trauma and the woman that runs this contacted me and asked me if I would be on her podcast and she said I want you to talk to talk about yourself for an hour now I thought how am I ever going to talk about myself for an hour don't be cheeky anyone I know what you're thinking but no I didn't have any problem so um, it was a really in-depth interesting interview you know with somebody who didn't have the same experiences of HIV or of, of, of the things that I've experienced and yeah it was a really interesting interview to do and um, it's going to be in the description box down below so if you go down there and click on tough love and that'll take you to the podcast if you would like to listen to it. Another bit of press was a new magazine a new magazine is an American magazine and they did a story on me a few months ago but it just came out last week so again it was just another it's funny when I was reading the interview back I was like oh I don't know if people know that about me or that's interesting I don't you know I don't talk about that very often or so yeah so a new magazine the link will also be in the description box down below now it's something else that people often ask about and I don't talk about enough I've realized is my health and it's tough because I don't like to talk about not getting better or the issues that I'm having not easing up or you know going away now as some of you know I suffer from a condition called gastroparesis now everybody's like what is that so let me tell you what gastroparesis is for me so gastroparesis can affect you in different ways it can make you have a lot of gastrointestinal problems which means you don't go to the toilet properly or you go to the toilet too much luckily that isn't me but what it does to me is it makes me very, very nauseous all the time. And the nausea is really bad. It's so bad that some days I don't get out of bed because I just can't stand up properly because the nausea is like a train running me over and I don't want to be standing up or moving around because every movement makes it worse. And it really, it detaches me from my friends. I've realized, you know, it, it, puts, it puts a wedge between me and other people. And that's not a deliberate wedge. That's, you know, they go out for meals or they go for drinks and, um, and very often I can't go. I never go to eat out. 
anymore. Very rarely I go for a drink. I am going to tell you a drinking story in a minute, but um, yeah, because I just can't do it. Just food or alcohol makes it worse. So if I am going to eat, I be I like to be at home, you know, so that if I do get sick or if I do feel unwell, I've not got far to run to the toilet, you know. So. So gastroparesis is difficult and I've had a lot of different things done. I've had surgery, I've had Botox injected into my stomach, I've had all different kinds of medication. Oh, I've had everything and it's bad. It's really not pleasant and it's getting harder, I think, you know, it's... I just live, living with it for so long is really... Yeah, I just carry on and I go, I'm okay, I'm fine and... Hey everybody, I'm back. Scene change. Can we change scene, please? Okay, so we have moved um, location because it was just getting too damn dark out there. I couldn't see myself in the monitor and I was thinking, if I can't see myself, then you're not going to be able to see me. Okay, so as I was saying about my health, so yeah, it's difficult and yeah, I struggle with it a lot more than than I ever talk about really. It's funny because the next thing I wanted to talk about was getting to see my friend Nikki who some of you will remember from a video that we did about two years ago and um, Nikki's my friend that I've known since Bombay Dreams days and she was my dresser on Bombay Dreams and we've just been great friends ever since and Nikki was diagnosed with cancer two years ago well a year a year ago it was in the March that we all went into lockdown and that's been really tough for her anyway but it's been even tougher because she wasn't able to have any of us there to support her you know going to chemo with her or being there when she was having radiotherapy and her like many other people you know have struggled through with the help of phone calls and things like that but not with anybody you know besides their partners or you know things like that so i got to see nikki so it was amazing to just put my arms around her and give her a good squeeze you know and um yeah it's funny how we don't often see ourselves as heroes we see other people as heroes and nikki is one of those people you know i've had so many people in uh, out of my friends group that have been affected by cancer, you know, David, Andrea, Heather, Sally, Nikki, you know, just so many people have been affected by it and she, they are all my heroes. They really are my heroes because I can only imagine how difficult chemo and radiotherapy and getting things removed and everything is and um, to be with her and just be able to hang out with her and her family and just sit and talk and go shopping together and just be silly and just touch each other was just so wonderful and amazing. Like with all my friends and with everybody suffering from cancer, I just, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Just keep fighting, you know, because, because you are amazing. Now somebody else who's amazing is my friend Liza. So Liz, who you know, I call her Liza, after Liza Minnelli of course, because she's the most dramatic person I know in the world and Liza Minnelli is the most dramatic person I, well I don't know her personally, but um, but yeah, that's why Liza is Liza to me. And Liza came down to London and it was so funny because we met and I was meeting her a couple of hours before she was going to see a show. And I said, what do you want to do, Liz? You know, what? where do you want to go? You know, and she said, should we go for a cocktail? So I thought, well, you know, it'd be rude not to. So Liz and I went for one cocktail. That was my plan. But she bought the first cocktail. So it was only polite of me to buy the second one. But then she bought a third one. So I just thought, what the hell? I'll buy a fourth one. I am telling you, I was legless. I don't drink. I very, very rarely drink. You know, ask any of my friends, Gary, Calvin, Jean, they'll all tell you, they'll be like, Stephen hardly ever drinks. But I drank that night and I was drinking cocktails. I was pie-eyed 
and she was going to the theatre afterwards to see a show which she managed to stay awake throughout which yeah is an amazing feat in itself but um, I'm going to put some pictures in of me and Liz here um, just of us out that night having lots of fun and talking about the past and catching up it's an amazing medicine that that is to to anybody you know whether you're sick or not it's it's an amazing medicine for the soul to, to to see friends and to talk about your growing up together and the silly things you did and the fun you had and the tears that were sh shed, you know. So it was really nice to see Liza. And the other thing is people keep asking me about my wrist. My wrist is, I can't see it on YouTube because I'll get kicked off, but it's knackered. It's, they cut, they, they did surgery two years ago and it wasn't successful. And I was at the hospital today on the day that I'm filming this video and they said, you need to have more surgery, Stephen. So that's tough because it's it's an operation that I have to have done while I'm awake because because of this gastroparesis that, that I have, my stomach reacts so badly to the morphine and the anesthetic that I have to be awake during surgeries if, if that can happen. And the recovery time is just, it's at least two months. And two months is how long your, you know, your arm is like that. You know, you have to keep it strapped up for for eight weeks. And then you have to start the recovery of, um, of massage and all those different things. And I live on my own and it's hard because people are, you know, people are willing, but it's not always... Sorry, Gus is jumping around in the background. But yeah, um, so I said no, to the, I said, I didn't say no altogether, I said can we put it on hold and the doctor was like, okay. But then once I left the hospital, I thought, what am I putting it on hold for? Wait until my stomach is better. You know, that's what I was telling myself, but I could be waiting a hell of a long time. So I don't know now if I should maybe just say to them, look, just cut me open again, just see if it'll work this time, you know. Instead of just cutting vertically this time, they would then cut horizontally across the top of my wrist because my nerves in my wrist are being strangled. It's amazing, isn't it, what the body can do, you know, and how it can go wrong in some ways, you know. So my, my own body is strangling my own nerves. It's crazy. So something that really made me smile, really made me smile and just made me feel all gooey inside was going over to Rich and Emily's this week. Now, you remember Rich and Emily. It was Rich and Emily's wedding that I went to on the island. And that video is available because I'm not in my bedroom. I never remember which side it is, but up here. I think it's up here. At long last, Rich and Emily have had babies. No, I don't mean those kind of babies. They've got kittens. So they've got two kittens. One's called Ben and one's called Solero. And I'm gonna put a little video in here of me meeting Ben and Solero. What are you doing? What are you doing? Eh? Crazy cat. Crazy cat. Is your brother looking up the chimney? Hey? You're going to be the star of the video, aren't you, Slayero? Your brother's not. I can just see his eyes on that black fireplace. He, he, the, you can't see him, you can just see the eyes. doing insane brain yes yes you crazy cat you crazy cat you crazy cat you crazy cat are you Hello, boo boo. Hello, boo boo. At 
they not the cutest things I could just eat them they are just so gorgeous not as gorgeous as you Gracie and Gus so yeah so that's it really that's what all this build up all this what's been going on all this we need to talk has been about please check out those different things that are in the description box please remember to like share comment and subscribe please let me know what you have done recently that has made you smile something that's just made you feel good inside and i don't know if there's anybody i'm sure there are people out there that have gastroparesis if you are one of those people i would love to hear about your experiences about how you deal with it about things that have worked for you or not worked for you and also people that are going through long-term illnesses I just want to send out a big, big, massive hug to you all and just say that you are amazing and wonderful. And um, yeah, just send loads and loads of love to you all. Okay, everybody, I will see you again in two weeks' time. It was lovely to have this sit down, this catch up, this, you know, just you and me and Gracie and Gus. Can you see Gus up there? There is Gus. And there is Gracie. <laughs> yeah so that's us everybody so i just wanted to catch up with you and say hey and i will see you in two weeks time remember subscribe thank you